If you're going down the extended range guitar rabbit hole, you might find yourself searching specialty online retailers for thicker and thicker strings. But playing notes that are on par with a bass, at what point do you ask yourself, should I just buy bass strings? Or maybe you're at this point having thought, do I really need to buy a bass as a guitarist, or could I just appropriate its strings onto an unused guitar at the moment? Just like the biggest difference between guitar and bass themselves, the main difference in their strings is how long they are and where their tapers start on particularly thick strings in order to still fit through any tailpiece past the bridge and machine heads after the nut. Six string bass string sets most commonly refer to a normal bass set with an extra high and low string at a B standard tuning in fourths. And you still got the lower E, A, D, G in the middle, leaving no nut slot unfilled on a standard guitar if you wanted. So could we find decent workarounds to fit a square peg into a round hole and mess with the tonal implications? This is coming from said too much. So on my Chief Squire Bullet Strat, the thinnest three gauges fit perfectly with the bass ball end just catching on the outside of the tremolo block instead of settling inside. Moving on to the A string, pulling the saddle forward a little let it clear the string through hole, but we're stuck where the taper turns into the full string gauge at the machine head, unable to wind all that excess even if we wanted. The E string is met with the same one issue, but the thickest B string can't even fit through the string through hole anymore. Knowing this might be the case for a string thicker than even the saddle screw, my plan going in was to string it through backwards, cutting off the ball end to tie to the taper on the other side. In practice though, the rigid knot seems to hold shape and tension all by itself. Over at the other end of the strings, my solution was going to be the solder and unwinding trick I've used in the past, creating my own new taper. But these strings have some sort of weird coating on them. Despite Diodario going the extra mile to ensure longer lasting strings and minimal fret wear, they've killed my ability to get any sort of solder to stick. With locking tuners, my first impulsive, frustrated thought was to risk it anyway, ensuring I'm unwinding as little as possible after trimming, and it seemed successful on the A and E strings. But the B string I almost immediately felt loose in and had to strip three whole layers to get to the core for the locking tuner to hold onto it. Past experiences were reaffirmed by some slight high frequency rattling. But it's not horrible when we really want to focus on the bass frequencies anyway, and the pickups don't seem to notice it as much based on where they're located. Things could have gone a lot worse, and with just some slight filing to barely fit those lower strings on the now shallow looking nut, we're in decent enough shape to head for a test demo.
So what do y'all think? Is this worth trying on your own even? Or are you just gonna stick with normal base or your trusted online retailer? One other concern I had going into this was how challenging such a tighter string spacing could feel, shoving six strings in a comparable nut space that the base fits five. Further tuning, these strings are actually at a pretty high tension for what you might consider on a guitar too. Despite a quarter less scale length than the bass, bass guitar strings go with almost double the tension of guitar strings, and I had to use all six spring slots in the tremolo cavity to combat this. Six string bass sets also exist in the form of Fender bass six sets, which are basses exactly an octave below a normal guitar on a normal looking Jazz Master slash Jaguar body and string spacing, but with a 30 inch scale length neck. It's something I ironically also put on a normal scale length Stratocaster mod, but in a coarse arrangement, from which I made an experimental instrumental you can check out in the description. Obviously, I wasn't really taking this video too seriously. If you want to share your own solution ideas to that one problem down below in the comments. I'm happy to kind of give a heads up if you guys want to try this on your own. For now though, enough said. For early video access, raw instrument tracks, and more exclusives, find our community on Patreon and consider adding your support. Said so much.